Hey everybody, Gladys back here once again, and I'm back for another episode of uh, Medal of Honor updates. And I wanted to take some time in between that first impression video to where I could actually get past my first impression and, you know, like getting into a new game. If you enjoy it, it seems great, like there's there's no problems, whatever. But once you start getting into a little bit of the life cycle, once you get some actual game time in, you get to look at it differently and kind of get over that euphoric first sense of like wow this is great so now that I've had um, I'm, I'm about 10, 10 hours of playtime into the game and I've uh, I've done quite a bit with the spec ops and the point man classes I'm still working on the other ones um, but with as far as like the accessories or attachments go you can unlock them for each weapon for different classes without actually using the weapons. It doesn't work like Battlefield to where you can only unlock the attachments for a weapon if you use the weapon. It doesn't work like that. Uh, some of them have attachments that you can only unlock by using them or getting so many kills with them, uh, etc. But not all of them work that way, not all of the attachments. So for me, uh, I was just saying, okay, well, I'll get over a lot of these attachments simply by just playing the game, so I'm going to use what I enjoy first, and then once I get some playtime in, I'll start exploring the other ones. So that's what I've been doing so far. And I'm still really enjoying this game, 10 hours in, and I think it's great. Um, it's been critically panned almost across the board, and a lot of it just seems like unfair Call of Duty worship, and it, it's exactly that. It's just unfair. This is, uh, this is a game that deserves your attention for a lot of reasons. Um, it does have its share of problems, but just like any game does, uh, it brings more to the table than a Call of Duty game does. It's, uh, it's bigger and better. I think the gameplay is funner. It's less twitchy for me, and uh, it just seems to, to actually take skill. So you're rewarded for working with your team as well. That's, that's also gets points for me. So I'm playing in normal mode here which I definitely favor over hardcore if you guys know me or if you've watched any of the other videos or maybe a battle chat. Uh, you know that I prefer normal mode to hardcore and that's for a lot of different reasons and I don't want to get into that right now. So let me move on to some of the some of the information here that you're going to run into if you're going to play this game. They have what they call different tours that you can have and this is purely for your classes. You have a tour for each class. So if you... Uh, a, a tour is 50,000 points. And once you hit the 50,000 point cap for that particular class, say for example Spec Ops, it gives you a score. And the, the score, it's, it's how they work it out is it's graded by your kill to death ratio times your score per minute, I believe. Um, so you should end up with a, a rather high number, hopefully, if, you're, if your KD is pretty good. Um, so the tours keep counting. Like currently I'm on three tours completed with spec ops and one tour completed with point man I'm about halfway there with the assault class but uh, the tours are a good way to kind of measure how you're doing because it shows you on battle log what your best tour score is it's kind of a time twister there it shows you what the best score tour is uh, and also what your current score tour is or tour score whatever now I'm just losing it all right so uh, for the game as well you can earn 74 medals each uh, each one you can only get once, not like Battlefield, where they can stack sometimes. So um, I have 23 out of 74 medals at this point in time. Um, you also have weapon pins, and this is for each class. It's not, uh, as far as I know, it's not every weapon. Like, okay, you can only access certain weapons for each class. Um and you get those by leveling up, getting different ranks, and you'll unlock new soldiers. I also have uh, 56 out of 72 soldiers unlocked at this point in time, so I'm getting close to the end. I can see the end of the tunnel as far as the soldiers goes. But for the weapon pins, it's for each class. Uh, they're unlocked. There's three pins for each weapon in the class. They're unlocked at 20 kills, 200 kills, and 500 kills. And total, there are 216 possible pins. So for you completionists, you're looking at 720 kills with each weapon uh, to get all three pins for it. And doing that a whole bunch <laughs> for 216 possible pins. So you completionists are really going to have a rough time getting through all this. And you're going to have to use every class to get those, uh, those tours completed and everything. Um... 
So, some favorite weapons of mine so far, I've got one for the Spec Ops class, it's the MK-18. And they come in a couple different variations based on the soldiers that you're using. Uh, and also, for Point Man, I've got two favorites. I've got the F-88 and the AK-5. Now, the F-88 is what you'll see me using in this video a lot. It's uh, It comes with a stock scope on there, and I believe it's a three-time scope, but I'm not positive. And it's weird to me how they set up some of these weapons, because when you unlock the weapon, in my mind, it should be bare. It should be totally naked with no attachments, nothing on it, and you should have to unlock them to add to the weapon. However, that's not how, that's not how it happens. Um, when you unlock these weapons, they give you, for instance, this scope that I've got on there is one of the ones that they give you right off the bat. So you don't have iron sights unlocked. I would really prefer using iron sights on this weapon, but I can't. It just it doesn't allow me to do it until I unlock it. And some of the weapons don't have uh, iron sights available, even. So that's kind of weird. Uh, it's weird how they set that up, but I'm still loving the customization options. I think there's just a stupid amount of paint jobs that you can put on each weapon. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. If you go into the customize screen, you can see you have so many out of so many unlocks for each weapon, and I've noticed they've all been in the upper 90s for the total unlocks for the weapon, and that's not all just accessories and stuff that you can put on there. It includes paint jobs, and that's where a good chunk of those accessory are going to come from. Uh, so, if, if, for example, if you've got, say, 98 unlocks for a weapon, probably 50 to 70 of those are going to be different paint schemes. So, um, it's really buffed by, like, the, like the number count. It's There's a lot of fluff when you look at that. That's not purely attachment numbers. Um, so that's a little bit disingenuous with there. So far, um, I've been kicking ass in this game. Uh, me and the clan have been putting in a lot of work, and we're still trying to figure out how exactly we go about getting everybody into a party and successfully getting us into a game and into fire teams. At this point in time, the VOIP, the voice uh, in-game with your squad or your team, it's not working very well. And this is one of the problems that they said they know about and that they're working on. And it's curious because it's the same thing that happened with Battlefield 3. For the first couple months of its release, the VOIP was awful. Uh, voices cut out, you couldn't hear each other. Uh, the, the communication that was so vital for teamwork, you know, that we, we knew was going to be vital, just wasn't available for us. And that's the same thing that we're running into with this game every once in a while. It's weird because if you get everybody in-game and we get on the same team, this happened to us uh, the night before last, I believe. We had, I think, seven guys on the team together. Uh, we all went to team chat instead of just our fire team chat. And you still... I, I couldn't hear one guy, but everybody else could hear him and talk back and forth. But I couldn't hear him, and he couldn't hear me. And we were on different fire teams, but I could hear his fire team buddy. So I don't understand what the system is doing as far as the VOIP goes, but right now it's not working very well. And it's weird because in-game, like I said, we have those problems, but when you get to the end-game lobby, and it's, you know, everybody's sh showing the points and ribbons that they've got and everything like that. When it gets to that screen, you can hear everybody, and it's the enemy included. So there can be a little bit of smack talk for you guys who like to talk trash. Um, at the end of the game, you can speak to your enemies, um, you know, laugh at them, make fun of them, whatever you feel like doing. Uh, matchmaking is also another problem that we're running into. There's a lot of great things in this game, and the few problems that we have so far uh, seem to mainly be in the VOIP and matchmaking area. So if I have a party and I have one guy in my squad with me and we lock our slots, <coughs> excuse me, if we lock our slots, hypothetically, it should keep us together no matter what. It shouldn't join us into a game and split us up because we're locked in those spaces. So until either myself or him leaves the party, it should always be the two of us. That's how the system was explained by uh, Danger Close and EA, and that's makes sense. You know, that's how it should work. Uh, that's not how it happens, though. So we'll get split. We'll get put into two different fire teams, and we'll each be without a fire team buddy. And this may be just uh, an issue as far as like the game trying to balance itself. I don't know exactly what it's doing again, but the the matchmaking system is also flawed. 
Now, I don't know if this is going to be completely fixed by going into the server browser and just trying to find a server from there. Lately, I think we've just been doing quick matches, but that's where we're at now. Um, so I'm going to gloat a little bit. Like I said, I've been doing very well in this game. Um, currently worldwide ranked on the PS3. My score per minute, I'm number 42. Uh, kills per minute, number 54. Win-loss ratio, 83. General score per minute, 83. And KD ratio, 106. So I'm fairly high up there um, as far as stat-wise goes. And that's pretty cool. Uh, there's a lot of information you can find. I'll put a link up to there. I don't know if you guys ever use the website battlefield3stats.com or bf3stats.com, but they have a sister site, uh, Medal of Honor Warfighter Stats, and that's where I was getting these numbers. So I'll throw a link up in the description to my profile on there. I'll put a link up to the battle log. As always, I'll put a link up to the Facebook page because we do a lot more updates there. Everybody can chime in, tell us their stories, their problems, what they're having, any questions they have, etc., etc. You know, we're always available to be reached on that page. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for sticking with us. I'm going to be doing a video for soldier upgrades and accessories and stuff like that coming up here in the next few days. So add us on Facebook. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube, and we'll see you guys on the battlefield. Take care.